and welcome to Teacher Gimbal Channel. Today we'll be going over illustrative math geometry unit 2 lesson 9 practice problems. If you like this video please make sure to like and subscribe. The buttons are somewhere in these corners and make sure to check out our new website www.rateyourprincipal.org where you can rate your principal for school year SY 23-24 so last school year and soon we'll have the principals updated for you to rate your principal this school year. Alright let's get started. Problem number one. A kite is a quadrilateral which has two sides next to each other that are congruent and where the two sides, uh, where the other two sides are also congruent. Given kite W, X, Y, Z, show that at least one of the diagonals of the kite decomposes the kite into two congruent triangles. Okay, so these sides are side by side and they are congruent and these two sides side by side are congruent. So we know that it is a kite. We're given the kite W, X, Y, Z. We're showing that at least one of the diagonals decomposes the kite into two congruent triangles. I'm going to choose this diagonal right here. So if I cut it in half, I can see I have this triangle and that triangle. We need to show that they are congruent. Well, that side is congruent to that side. This side is congruent to that side. And we have this shared side in the middle, which gives us SSS. SSS is three sides that are congruent, make congruent triangles. And we're done. We're going to go on to the next question. Problem number two. May has proven that triangle WYZ is congruent to triangle WYX using the side 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 congruence theorem. So we have WYZ is congruent to WYX using side side side. Why could you now conclude that the diagonal Y WY bisects angle ZYX and ZY, ZWX and ZYX. So she's concluded triangle WYZ is congruent to triangle WYX. Okay, and we know that congruent, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, which means this angle right here, which corresponds to this angle right there, are congruent because they correspond in the same right here. Now, because we know that ZYX, ZYX splits into two triangles, two angles, and this angle, ZYW, is congruent to angle WYX, so this dot is congruent to that dot angle. That tells us that this has to be a bisector because it split those two in half. Again, we know these two are congruent because they're corresponding parts of congruent triangles. We've already proved the triangles are congruent. So we know ZWY, ZWY is congruent to YWX, YWX. And because those two are congruent, that means that YW has to be an angle bisector. All right, if you have to listen to that over again, I recommend you listening to that over again. And for whatever reason, I get my W's and Y's mixed up. I do not like those letters. Problem number three. W's and Y's again. W, X, Y, Z is a kite. Okay, we talked about it. So we got these two sides that are congruent side by side and these two sides that are congruent side by side. And has a measure of 133 degrees. Angle W, X, Y. So this guy in there, Let's do some colors. Has a measure of 133 degrees. An angle ZYX, ZWX, I can't talk. ZWX has a measure of 60 degrees. Find the measure of angle ZYW. So we want to know ZYW, this guy right here, question mark. Well, just like before, we can see side, side, side is congruent to side, side, side. So we know the two triangles are congruent. So if the corresponding parts are congruent, so if this is 133, this has to be 133. Which means we can solve for question mark because all three interior angles of the triangle, including question mark, has to equal 180 degrees. So 60 plus 133 degrees and, oh, the whole thing is 60 degrees. <laughs> I was like, that makes above 180. So we missed a step here. We're going to go back. We're going to erase that 60 and we're going to say 60 is ZWX. So the whole thing is 60 degrees. 
Well, the good thing is that we just said those two triangles are congruent, which means this right here, this side, is congruent to that side. So if the whole thing is 60, this little guy in there has to be 30 degrees. And this little guy on that side is also 30 degrees. So 30 plus 133 plus question mark has to equal 180 degrees, because I'm looking at just this triangle. And let me highlight him in blue. This is why we got to work slowly and methodically and not too quickly. These guys we can combine. We get 163 plus question mark equals 180 degrees. And then we could subtract 163 from both sides. And we get question mark is equal to 17. And we're done. We found the measure of angle Z, Y, W. Pause the video, rewatch if you have any questions on this one. And if you're still a little uncomfortable, I recommend you trying to do it on your own. Problem number four. Oh, these are our converse. Each statement is always true. Select all statements for which the converse is also always true. If two angles form a straight angle, they are supplementary. Yes. If two angles are supplementary, then they form a straight angle. Uh, nope. Those two angles are supplementary. They do not form a straight angle. In an isosceles triangle, the base angles are congruent. Yep. Converse, if the base angles of a triangle are congruent, then it is isosceles. Yep, that is true. If a point is equidistant from two endpoints of a segment, then it lies on the perpendicular bisector. We got A and we got B. An equidistant point might be in the middle, it might be a little above it, it might be over here, it might be down here. It's never going to be on this side because then it's going to be closer to B. And it's never going to be on that side because then it's going to be closer to A. So actually, yeah, it always does lie on the perpendicular bisector. Also, if a point lies on the perpendicular bisector, then it is equidistant then from the two endpoints of the segment. Yep, this one is true. Statement two, if two angles are vertical, they are congruent. Yep, if two angles are congruent, then they are vertical. Congruent angles, not vertical, not true. Statement two, if two lines are perpendicular, then they intersect to form a right four right angles. Yep, that is true. If two lines intersect to form four right angles, then they are perpendicular. Those guys intersect. One, two, three, four. Yep, they are perpendicular. That is correct. And we're done. If you ever have problems like this, I would always recommend drawing it out, seeing if you can find something different, and then checking your answers. Problem number five. Prove triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CBD. So we have this figure. We know DC is parallel to AB. When I have parallel lines, I almost always start by drawing them. I recommend you do the same. I mark that they're parallel. And I like that because it helps me find a transversal, which helps me find some congruent angles. I love my congruent angles. So we've got angle ADB is congruent to angle ADB. No, that's the wrong angle, so we always are very careful with our letters. Angle ABD is congruent to angle CDB because they are alternate interior angles, and alternate interior angles through parallel lines are congruent. We also know angle A is congruent to angle C because they are right angles, and all right angles are congruent. Finally, we know DB is congruent to DB. It's a segment because they are the same line, so that is our reflexive property. So we have an angle, we've got a side in the middle, and we've got an angle over there. Angle, angle, side. So by angle, angle, side, triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CDB. And we're done. So pause this video if you need to write it down. And again, questions like this, doing them on your own will help you remember how to do them correctly. All right, triangle ACD and BCD are isosceles. Triangle DBC has a measure of 84 degrees and angle BDA has a measure of 24 degrees. Find the measure of angle BAC. So, <coughs> excuse me, I'm gonna zoom in here as much as I can. So we have triangle angle DBC, DBC is a measure of 84 degrees. We also know BDA, B 
BDA has a measure of 24 degrees. We want to find the measure of angle BAC. BAC. So this is the guy we want to know. So I'm going to start, and I know this guy is congruent to that guy. So I know those two guys are the same, which tells me that 84, and I'm going to call him x, and if he's x, then he's also x, plus two x's, because I have one two x's, has to equal 180 degrees. I'm going to subtract 84 from both sides, and I'm going to get two x is equal to 96 degrees. I'm going to divide both sides by two, and I'm going to get x is equal to 48 degrees. So this guy is 48 degrees. This guy is 48 degrees. So now I have this whole dude right here in black. Black is going to be 24 plus 48, because it's that A little angle plus that little angle, which gives us 72. If that one's 72, our big triangle is isosceles, which tells us this guy is also 72. Now we can solve for this full guy, because we've got two 72s. And the full guy, let's call him y, plus y, is going to equal 180 degrees. Our two 72s is 144 plus y, so equals 180 degrees. I subtract 144 from both sides, and I get y is equal to 36. So y is equal to 36. Now, we know that this triangle has a shared side right here. So this triangle is congruent to that triangle, which means these two corresponding angles have to be the same. So if the whole thing is 36, we would say each one has to be 36 divided by 2, and 18 degrees is our final answer. Again, I know this is a lot of math. Pause this video if you need to think about it, and try it on your own if you need a little extra practice. Problem number seven. Reflect right triangle ABC across line AB. Classify triangle CAC prime according to its side length. Ex side length. Explain how you know. So I'm reflecting it across line AB. That means A is going to remain on A, B is going to remain on B, and C is going to go that distance over. I make a C prime. I now have a new triangle. I know that this side is congruent to that side because it's a reflection. This side is congruent to that side because it is a reflection. And I know that this angle is congruent to that angle because it is a reflection. And we're classifying the triangle. Well, if the two sides are congruent, the two angles are congruent, and it is an isosceles triangle. And we are done. All right, if you have any questions, post them in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. It's in one of the corners. And make sure to check out rateyourprinciples.org. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one.